No code is a buzzword that is going around and it is rightfully going around incredibly quickly. Why? Because it allows you to build software and to create automations without writing a single line of code, meaning that you can drag and drop features to be able to build complex apps or software projects and you don't have to learn how to code to do so. However, when it comes to building things with no code, people make huge mistakes. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the most common no code mistakes and how you can avoid them. What's up everyone, Christian Peverelli here and welcome back to my startup studio where we give you tips and tricks to build your startups with no code tools. Now the number one mistake that people make when building with no code is to identify the wrong tool to build with. Oftentimes that starts because people have a vision of the end product that they wanna build and instead of building a first version of that product, they want to figure out which tool allows them to build this incredibly huge software monster. And so they're very quickly directed towards tools that are a lot more complex. They start learning the tools, then they feel a little demotivated, and suddenly they're trying to give up on their dreams because they identified the wrong no-code tool. And that's often because people try to run before they learn how to walk. And all that comes down to the fact that you've not really been able to identify the minimum viable product that you're trying to build. And oftentimes, guess what? If you're trying to build a piece of software, you can build a first version with easier tools and then easily and very quickly jump into another tool to build the next iteration, the next version, an improved version of the software that you're trying to bring to market. And if you choose the wrong no-code tool when you're trying to build a deeper product or a more complex product, then that might mean that you'll have limitations in terms of the functionality that you can deliver to your end customer. So it's super important to select the proper no-code platform for the stage that you're in, for the experience level that you have, and for the specific functionalities that you're trying to build next. By the way, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. You can also find a free course on how to launch your startup idea leveraging no-code tools right below in the comment section. Every sub allows us to keep doing what we're doing to deliver you awesome content weekly. Mistake number two when building with no-code is not testing early enough, meaning that you get stuck in overthinking and overbuilding endless features, polishing every single pixel off, making sure that your product is absolutely perfect before you actually get a user or a customer to use it. Now, this is a mistake because oftentimes when you build products, there are a lot of assumptions that go behind those products. So you wanna build something very simple and then you wanna bring it to market. You want to have your users test it out, tell you which features they would like to see to improve the experience, tell you and show you which ones they're using already so that you can improve those features and ultimately build something that other people will use. So a big risk that you have in not going to market early, not bringing your product to customers early on is to just basically be in a dark tunnel trying to guess where the exit is and hoping that your product is gonna fit the market perfectly. If I can tell you from experience, you most likely will not nail it on the first go. So not testing your product early on is an essential mistake that people make. And this by the way goes for coding and no code. Mistake number three, Three, is not properly defining what you are trying to build. Oftentimes people have a very vague idea of what they are trying to actually build out. Either they just kind of have an idea of what this thing will do, but are really missing the details around how that will work, or they simply haven't taken the time to go from idea to what that product might look like. Now the first thing you wanna do is actually determine the requirements. So try to draw out every screen that you might see in your app, or every page that you might have if you're building a web app, or a website and also create a functional map of how these things actually connect to each other. So for example, if you would click on this button, it would go here or it might go there. You can pretty much map out all of the designs and all of the logic of your app with paper and pen. You can also use tools that allow you to prototype these like Figma or other design tools. Now, once you've done that exercise, I highly recommend for you to figure out what is a simpler version of this product that I could build first that would deliver maybe 70% 80% of the value to the end customer. Doing this thought exercise can oftentimes narrow down the scope of what we're trying to build and can then allow us to build a product way quicker, bring it to market, test it out. So the idea here is to map out the requirements and then to minimize those requirements as much as possible. Now the fourth mistake that people make when building with no code is to not start small. 
Now the importance of starting small obviously has to do with building products that customers actually want and doing that quickly, but it also has to do with your own ability to learn a new skill. So like everything, if you're a beginner, you shouldn't be diving into incredibly complex things early on before you've gotten a grasp of the basic things. Your ability to see quick results building software with no code is what's going to actually get you excited to learn deeper and deeper functionalities and to ultimately be able to master the skills of building software leverage no code. It's the same reason why you would feel like an idiot if you had just learned how to walk and suddenly you're racing against Usain Bolt, right? You're now comparing yourself with someone who's way ahead of you, right? So instead of that, what you got to do is to minimize the scope of what you're trying to do, to build leveraging tools which are at your learning level, and to be able to quickly prove to yourself, hey, I can actually do this. This is completely feasible for me. And that then unlocks the opportunity for you to go way deeper in the task, commit more time in doing so because you're seeing actual concrete results. So if your analysis process Analysis, you just have to start with a first small step in building a product and understanding that the first time you build something, you're gonna break it. You're not gonna build it amazingly. Totally fine. It's about getting started and then committing consistent time in learning that skill. The amazing thing with no code is that the return on investment in terms of skills and time are incredible. And it's gonna transform you into a person who feels capable of doing more technical tasks, whether it's automation or building software. And those, my friends, were some of the common mistakes you can make building with no code. If you enjoyed this, please like this video, share it with friends, check out the free course below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. See you later. Let's go.